belongs to you. Tabernacle worship tonight. Uh, it's gonna be a beautiful night. Um, it's the week after my birthday, so I'm fresh, excited, and ready for another year. You pray for me, I pray for you, or you pray for me, I pray for you. And uh, I'm just excited tonight. Uh, I feel excited, I feel um, refreshed and ready to go for another year. And uh, this is the beginning of another part of my life and I'm excited that the Lord is with me and I hope the Lord is with you. Um, I see some comments from Chacha. Thank you for your comments. Yes, I have a new haircut. <laughs> I hope I did okay. Um, my hair was getting too long so I went ahead and uh, got the clippers and did it myself and uh, I've done it for about a year now so I'm getting better and so uh, it takes time with practice and God is good. I'm, I'm thanking God for the ability to be able to do this but tonight we want to praise the Lord tonight and worship him for his goodness. For he is a good Lord. So let us pray as we begin. Father, I thank you for tonight. It's going to be a wonderful night. It's going to be awesome. I pray the Lord you bless us as we worship your name. As we lift up your mighty name, I pray you be glorified, O oh Lord. 
If there be anything that could hinder your presence tonight, we cast it out in Jesus' name. We come against it in Jesus' name. We pray against any hindrance from the enemy, any disruption from the enemy to come and hinder the flow of the Lord. We come against it and we pray, God, have your way tonight. Bless your people as we praise your name. If you can share the link tonight with your friends, invite them to join us. It's going to be awesome. Let them join us so we can worship together. Uh, and God will bless us tonight. Amen. Good to see Elizabeth Kimani. Good to see you. Uh, Mr. Wet, good to see you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome you all tonight to uh, Tabernacle Worship tonight. We're going to have a good time tonight as we worship and praise the Lord. It's good to see you all that are joining tonight. If you can share the link tonight, I'm also trying to share here. That's why you see me looking down here. I'm trying to share with more friends, more, more groups. If you can start a watch party and invite your friends. Good to see you, Lena, in Dallas. God bless you, my dear, for joining. Good to see all the other ones that are joining. Good to see Mr. Kairuki, Jacqueline Mwende. Oh, my good old friend, Jackie. Good to see you. Yeah, if you can share the link with your friends, let's have a good time in the Lord. Let's start the day for those in Africa and Europe. Let's start the day with excitement, with joy, with the presence of God. And those in the United States, in North America, let just close the night in power, in strength, in joy, and excitement. Hallelujah. Okay, let's have some good time in the Lord. God bless you. Everybody look, 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 see what the Lord has done for me. Everybody look, 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 see what the Lord has done for me. As you can tell, I like African music. <laughs> it has a good dance. I like to dance for the Lord. Good to see you, Mr. Ms. Kabaiko. Good to see you. Oh, my God. 
that's for Jesus. Come on, let me see you. Come on. Welcome you to Tabernacle Worship tonight. Tonight, tonight in Dallas, Texas. It's beautiful. It's like 70 degrees outside, like maybe 15, 20 in Africa, Celsius. It's an amazing night. Um, I like to end my day with praising the Lord on Sundays. It's my highlight of my week. I look forward to a time to just bring this worship life to you guys from my home, my home studio, and uh, be a blessing to you and your families as we praise and worship the Lord. Good to see you, Miss Felicia. Edmund, my old friend, good to see you, Felicia. Good to see you, Ms. Wangeshi Karanja. Good to see you, my sister, for supporting me. I appreciate you so much. We lift up the name of the Lord because the Lord is good. He deserves the praise and the glory and the honor. He has been so good to me. I don't know about you, but I have a testimony that I've seen the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, you know? So much has happened around me, and I keep on seeing the goodness of the Lord. Everywhere I look around, I see the blessings of the Lord. Everywhere I turn around, I see his goodness. So he deserves my praise, my worship. He deserves your praise and your worship. Because he's been good to you, Miss Wangeshi. He's been good to you, Miss Karanja. He's been good to you, Miss Ed Felicia. You can always look and want to thank God for what he has done for you. I saw my former classmate, Mr. Hinga, my college classmate from way back in the day. If you're still on, on, online, Mr. Hinga, Charles Hinga, good to see you, buddy. God bless you and keep Keep you and your family. May he bless your family in everything you do. I love you, man. Mwah. So let's praise the Lord tonight. Share the link with your friends to join us so we can have a good time. Those in Africa, it's good morning. In Europe, it's good morning. In Australia, it's good morning. The rest of us, it's good night. And uh, oh, thank you, Jesus. Okay, let's have some good time in praising him. Yes, thank you, Jesus.
Ma'am Jacinta Kimada, good to see you, Mama. Thank you for your support. God bless you. Good to see you, Miss Miriam. God bless you. No, 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 no,
Let's make it for him. Now, I want you to jump when you get to the front one. Go! See how much so step on the devil. Give me four here. Are you guys having a good time tonight? Are you enjoying the worship tonight, the praise? If you're not having fun, something is wrong. Good to see you, Mary Ann. Good to see you for joining us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's have a good time in the Lord. The people of the world know how to have fun. Christians, we should know how to have fun too. How to bring some excitement in the whole thing about Christianity. Make it fun. Make, it, make good quality music with good, good content to bless the people of God. Come on. It is good to praise the Lord because the people of the world have taken this gift from us. The gift of praise and worship and dance belong to the church. The beginning of the creation of time, before the time, the angels in heaven would praise and worship the Lord into eternity. And then sin came into the world through the, through the angel, the fallen angel. And they fell down, onto the, pushed down to the earth. And the king of dance came down and took the dance with him. But I'm telling you, there's some remnants some remnant angels who stayed with God, some holy angels who kept the dance going in heaven. And so we Christians can dance. We can emulate the, the godly angels who praise and worship the Lord, saying, holy, 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 holy is the Lord. From day to night, 24-7, they're always worshiping the Lord. So join me in this lifestyle of worship. It is so, so, so amazing. It's a feeling of, of satisfaction, a feeling of, of, you know, you feel the presence of God, you feel like you can do anything. You have the power to conquer any mountain. When you learn to be a life, a, a worshiper, mountains seem to melt before you in the presence of the Lord. Impossible valleys are filled by the Lord if you live a life of worship. Come on, worship him with me. And share the link with your friends. We invite them to join us tonight. That can have a, we've got about an hour left of praise and worship. Let's worship the Lord together. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let it rain, Jesus. Let it fall on me. Come on, say it. Fall on me. Can we say it? We're in your presence. Let it rain. Cause it rain. Let it fall on me. Come on, say it. We're in your presence. Let it rain. Cause it rain. To fall on 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, give a round of applause. We give it long, long Africa long. appreciates you. We praise you, man, Jesus. Open the floodgates in a balance and cause your brain to fall. The rain of mercy, the rain of peace, the rain of joy, the rain of love. Let it rain. 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 Let it rain on me. Father, we worship you, Lord. Let your rain fall on us tonight, O oh God, as we worship you, Lord. Let your rain fall on us, O oh God, as we worship you, Lord. Let your name be glorified tonight, O oh God, as we continue worshiping the Lord. May the Lord touch his people that are tuning in tonight and that are joining me with burdens and issues and prayer requests. May the Lord begin to touch your heart and search your heart and find those needs in your heart as you lift up your voice to him. You may be able to worship maybe loudly or maybe even in your heart if you're maybe at work. But no matter which way you're doing it, may the Lord meet you at the point of your need as you worship him. As you call upon the name, may he change your circumstances. As you sing to the King of Kings, may he visit you in your situation. May he search your heart and find those issues that, that even not your mama knows about, that only you know about. Not even your spouse can touch or fix those issues. But our God, Papa God, can fix them. Because he is worthy of all the praise. So come on, lift your voice and worship him. He's worthy of your praise tonight. bless your name tonight. Thanks for touching us as we worship your name. As we lift up your mighty name, may you be glorified tonight. May your name be lifted up in our hearts, O oh God. May you receive all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. You're worthy, Father God. Father God, in the tabernacle of worship, I lift up your name and I declare that you are king of glory. You're the king of kings and the lord of lords in my life, O oh God. In my family, O oh God. Oh, I pray you be Lord. Continue being the king of kings, O oh God. For you are the king high above every other God. I thank you for, oh God, you've been good to me. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus, 
Yahweh, you are Yahweh Jesus. Yahweh, King of Kings, you are Lord Jehovah, King of Israel. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name. We give you all the praise and all the glory. We bless your name. We praise you, Jesus. We bless your name. I worship for your worth, your praise, Lord. There is none like you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father God, I bless you. I thank you for your presence, oh God. I pray your name be blessed, oh God. I pray we be blessed tonight. For those that are with me this evening, I want to thank you for your time and for your moments of um, sacrificing your time to join me tonight. I pray that the Lord may bless you uh, as we continue to, uh, to the next part of this worship event. I hope you've all been blessed already and you're enjoying the worship. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I bless your holy name. I want to share with you a couple of things tonight and we continue worshiping. Tonight, I have a quick message for you. From prosecutor to apostle. That's the topic. From persecutor to apostle. Some people think that in order for God to use you, you have to be a really great, special person. Some people think for God to use you, you have to, to be born 
in a special home or born with a silver spoon in your mouth. Some people think to be used of God, you have to be born with some special abilities. Some people think for God to use you, you have to to be born in white clothes in a home that is not seen. Some people think for God to use you, you have to be to be born in a bishop or a, a senior clergy's home. But that is not the case. God can take a persecutor and turn him into an apostle. If God can speak through a donkey, he can definitely use you. If God can speak through a donkey, he can definitely speak through me. If God can use the, the jawbone of an ass to kill thousands of people who are against the servant of God, then God can use you to change your nation. God can use you to change your kingdom. God can use you to change your city and your village. Because our God is not looking for anybody born with special abilities. No, no, no. If you're born with special abilities, yes, he will use them for his glory. If you're born with some special abilities, God will use them for his glory. But it is not a prerequisite. It's not a prerequirement for him to use you. You don't have to be born in a special way. All that God is looking for you is availability. Be available. Available to the call of God. Like I am not special. I'm just a regular guy. I'm just a regular human being who found a calling in the ministry of worship, in the ministry of evangelism, in the ministry of leading people to the Lord. <clears throat> and I don't have any special abilities that I brought into this, into this, into this ministry. I just, I just came as I was. If I had time to tell you my story where I was, what I was doing before the Lord got me into ministry, you'd be shocked. But time does not allow me to talk about myself tonight. I only have time to talk about the man of God and the Lord himself. Because there is a man in the Bible who most people who hear the, the acts of God through him, people that hear the things that he did for God, people that hear the mighty work he did for God, they think maybe he was born and called from birth. They think maybe he was born and called from when he was a little child, maybe like, like a John the Baptist or something. They think maybe he was called before he was born, he was already a, a called into ministry and appointed, but that is not the case. This man was a persecutor, and his name is Saul the Saul of Tarsus. The Bible says in the Act, book of Acts chapter 8, I'll give you a little introduction about who uh, Saul of Tarsus was. In Acts chapter 8 verse 1, the Bible says, and Saul was consenting into his death, the death of Stephen, the death of Stephen, a servant of God who was killed. And Saul was consenting, he was consenting into, unto his death, into his death. And at the time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was in Jerusalem. Okay, and they all scattered abroad through the regions of Judea and Samaria except the apostles. The apostles remained to do the work of God. There was a lot of persecution, but they remained. They stayed. They said, if I die, let me die. If we die serving the Lord, we will stay here and serve the Lord. And verse 2 says, devout men, devout men carried Stephen's to, Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul... As for Saul, listen to this. As for Saul, he made havoc. He made havoc. Havoc is chaos. Havoc is calamity. Havoc is destruction. He made havoc, havoc of the church. He destroyed the church of God and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hailing men and women committed Committing them, committed them into prison. He would go from house to house looking for Christians like me and you, and he would drag them by the jaws of their by the jaws of their mouth. They would drag drag them by their hands, kicking and hollering, and drag them into prison. He was given special permission by the high priest to go and pick up and arrest every worshiper of the Most High God. That is who Saul was. He was a persecutor. He killed Christians. He would arrest them. He would drag them. He would tie them up and persecute them. And Saul made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hailing men and women, committed, committed them into prison. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the good news. The, you see, the enemy, when he comes to scatter the people of God, he thinks he will extinguish the gospel. He will stop us from preaching the gospel. When COVID-19 came into our nations, we, people thought there would be no more church, there would be no more preaching, no more singing. But I discovered I could speak 
of the Lord's goodness from my home. I discovered I could stock of his goodness from my house. I could set up a studio, a camp right here in my home. And even though we've been scattered by the disease of COVID, we can't do the things we used to do. I can still praise the Lord. I can still serve the Lord. We can still serve the Lord. Purity, you can still serve the Lord. Tobetab, you can still serve the Lord. No matter what opposition you're up against, you can still serve the Lord. So that's what Paul, Saul was a man who was after Christians. He would grab them and persecute them. That is the man who I'm talking about tonight. And it's amazing how God is able to change people because listen, in chapter 9, chapter 9, Paul, Saul, he was called Saul and God changes him later. But Saul was on a mission. He was on a mission to go and get more Christians. He was going to grab more Christians and, and persecute more Christians. He was heading to a city called Damascus, Damascus in Syria. He was going to get more Christians and get them into prison. He was going to get more. He was looking for, he was going to the, to the synagogues, to the tabernacles of worship, like my tabernacle of worship. And he would find anybody who calls upon the name of the Lord, he would put them in prison. Anybody that calls upon the name of the Lord, he would grab them and throw them into prison. So verse 1 of chapter 9 says... And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord. Listen to that. Listen to this scripture how it begins. This is in the Bible. Saul was breathing and threatening the slaughter of Christians. And Saul, breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went into the high priest. You see, many times the evil people of our, of our times, they come and they're given power by the leadership. Leadership enables them. The leadership becomes the enabler. The people in high places who should stop this evil should actually stop this crime of killing people. They are enabling. So Saul goes to the high priest, the man, of the, the man in charge of the top, and gets permission. Listen to verse 2. And desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues that eat, if he found any of his way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. He was getting permission, official letter saying, go into Damascus, into the, into the synagogues. If you find anybody worshiping the Lord, if you find anybody calling upon Jesus, grab them by their jaws, tie them by their ankles and, and, and bring them, drag them to, the, to prison. Bring them back to Jerusalem. They go to prison. That was Saul of Tarsus. He was an evil man. He was a bloodthirsty killer. He would kill you dead. But listen, verse 3, as he journeyed in verse 3, he came near Damascus. Some of you know the story. You know where I'm going with this, but a lot of you may not know what happened to Saul. As he journeyed to Damascus, suddenly there shined around him a light from heaven. And he fell on earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? Listen, he said, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? And he said, who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom you persecute. It is hard to kick against pricks. And he trembling and astonished him. He said, Lord, what will thou have me do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what, to, what you must do. So Saul is going to Damascus to slay Christians. And the Lord says, I have to stop this man. The Lord says, this has to come to an end right now. The Lord says, enough is enough. I'm tired of these men scattering my church. Jesus rose up and struck him from his horse. Struck him with a light that shone him so bright that made him blind. He was struck blind. He fell off his horse. He fell off his horse. And the Bible says in the continuing verse, And the man who journeyed with him stood speechless. Speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. They had a voice from above. They had a voice from, from, from the heavens, but they saw nobody. There was no man. So the people that we saw, they had this voice and they were astonished. They were speechless. They froze. They did not know what was going on. And they just know they had a voice that they could see who was speaking. And Saul arose from the earth, from the soil. He was on the dirt, on the soil. He rose up and when his eyes, his eyes were open... But he could see no man. He could not see. He was blind. He opened his eyes, but he could not see anything because he was blind. The light made him blind. He could not see anymore. Oh, Jesus. The Lord has a way of doing things. If he can't stop you by speaking to you, he will strike you down. That's what the Lord does. He has to have his way because he is Jehovah God. He is the king of all creation. So Saul rose up from the earth. And when his eyes were opened, he could see no man. So they, but they led him by the hand. They held his hand and led him into Damascus. The people that were with him, his servants, led him to Damascus because he could not see anymore. 
And he was there for three days without sight. He could not see. He was blind. Neither did he eat or drink. And while he was there, there was a certain disciple. You see, in every city, in every kingdom, in every village, the Lord has a remnant. The Lord has one or two people that still believe in God. In the city of Frisco, there's still a man who believes in Jehovah God right here in this house. The Lord always has a few people in every city, no matter how much chaos, no matter how much persecution you're going through. There's always a man of God somewhere. A man that God is going to use to bring forth the healing, bring forth the end of the persecution, bring forth the end of the pain and the suffering. There was a man in Damascus. In the, mod, in the middle of a Muslim city, Muslim country, there was a man in Damascus. There was a man, of course, he became Muslim later. But listen to this. Listen to this. There was a man in Damascus named Ananias. And he, and to him said the Lord in a vision. And he said, Behold, I am the Lord. The Lord spoke to, Damas, to, to Ananias. Says, Behold, I am the Lord. And the Lord said unto him in verse 11, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judah for a one man called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth, he is praying. He man went from persecution, persecuting the church, to now he's praying. See, some of you, it takes for God to strike you with a disease or with an infirmity to begin praying. Some of us, we don't serve God or follow God or go after God until we are hit by a disease or an accident or something crazy. I pray that none of us shall wait until the time when God has to strike you off a horse to get your attention. I pray that God will not have to wait for you to get to the point of no return and strike you off a horse to get your attention. I pray you will hear God while you can. I pray we will hear God while we are strong. I pray we will hear God while we have our eyes and our senses and our five senses. We can see, we can hear, we can touch, we can walk. I pray that God will get your attention now while you can now while we are hearing now we are we can able to process what he's saying do not wait until you're struck off your horse and made blind because now Saul is praying Bible says he is praying the blind man is praying the blind the persecutor the guy was persecuting Christians who was strong man on a horse he was cutting Christians down and grabbing them and taking them to jail now he's blind and he is praying if it takes for God to strike you down and make you to pray, woe well, unto you, but oh, it's better be praying than be in a worse position. So Paul was praying. Saul was praying. The Bible says he was praying. Hallelujah. So I said, I'm not going to wait, Lord. I'm not going to wait till I'm sick in this house. I'm not going to wait till I'm scattered by the enemy to start praising you. I will praise you and worship you now while I'm strong. Now while I can. Now while I have my senses. I will worship the Lord while I'm still strong. While I can still jump and dance. I will serve God while I'm able strong. While I can still fight the enemy. I will serve the Lord while I can. While I'm youthful. While I have the strength of the Lord. While I have the energy from God. While I have the, my senses. I can think and process in the Lord. I will serve the Lord. You better serve the Lord too. And listen. Verse 12 says, and he has seen a vision. That man who's praying has seen a vision of a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered unto the Lord. And you see, this guy was so bad, even people in Damascus knew him. Saul was so evil and so bad. He was such a blood cold killer that even people in Damascus knew him. So listen to what Ananias tells the Lord in verse 12. Verse 13, Ananias says, Then Ananias answered the Lord, I have heard by many of these men, I've heard of these men, how much evil he has done unto thy saints in Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priest, and to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Listen, the Lord said, I don't care how much he is feared. I don't care how much Saul is feared. I don't care how much Saul is mighty. How much he's been strong against the church of Christ. Right now he's blind, by the way. I don't care how strong he is, because God says in the next verse, and here he hath authority. Listen, verse 15. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. Excuse me. I'm going to say that again. I'm going to say that again. He says, but the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. How on earth would God call a killer, a murderer, a chosen one? How would God call a killer man, a murderer, a chosen one. How would God call Saul a chosen one? How would God choose Paul or Saul while he was still killing Christians? 
It's because our God is one, not a respecter of persons. He doesn't respect persons. He doesn't care about your position, your title, your, who you are in your country or your state or how low you are in the village you are. You may be living in a stinking little village in the middle of Kirinyanga somewhere in like Tok Tok in Kenya, somewhere in South Africa. It don't matter where you are. The Lord can touch you. The Lord can reach out and touch you. He can bring you out of that hole and use you. He sees your heart, not your mind. He sees your heart, not your body. He sees your heart, not your status. You may be the least in your village, in your city, in your town. People maybe don't like you. They don't like the way you speak. You stutter too much. You don't speak well. You cannot speak auditorically like I am speaking tonight. But the Lord sees beyond your stutter. He sees beyond your, your mumbling. And he sees your heart. And he says, you are a chosen vessel. You are a chosen vessel. You are a set aside for me. You've been set aside for me. You've been set aside for me. I don't care what the world thinks about you. You are my child. You are my child. And I love you with a passion. And I've called you that you may show forth the goodness of my of me. Show the goodness of God. That you may be able to go forth and declare all the goodness of the Lord. Because he is mine. See, Jehovah God did not see Saul within the limits of his bodily human nature. Jehovah did not see Saul within the limits of his evil lifestyle. Jehovah God did not see Saul within the limits of his godlessness. But before he knew him, before Saul was even struck blind, the, the hand of the Lord was still seeking after him. God was still searching for Paul, Saul of Tarsus. He was going after him. He was reaching for him. But because of the issues of life, because of his evil lifestyle, he could not hear from God. He could not see God. He could not feel God. He could not even have a sense of godliness. He was the farthest man from godliness. You may be there saying, I am so far from God. I have never served God. I have never lived for God. I don't know nothing about prayer. I have never given offering. I have never served, been to church. I have never done nothing for God. I have never been born again. I'm just as regular person. I just go about my life. I'm just a regular person. I go to, I sin every day. I do things. I kill. I do this as scatter. I lie. I cheat. I do all these things. I'm not honest. I, I do crap corruptions. I do all these things. How can God use me? How can God use me with all my lifestyle, with all the things that I've done, with all the chaos I have caused, with all the mess that I have made? There's a trail of mess. There's a trail of blood behind me. How can God use me with all the trail of blood that's behind me? How can God use me? Listen to me. If God can use anything, he can use you. That's a subtitle tonight. If God can use anything, he can use you. If God can use anybody, he can use me. If God can use an ass, a donkey, he can use you. If God can use Saul of, of Tarsus, the killer, the, the guy who was a murderer of the church, he can use you for sure. If God can use anybody, he can use you. Because God sees beyond your physical limitations. God sees beyond your chaos. He sees beyond your mess. He sees your heart. He's after your heart. He's coming after your heart. He's calling you he's drawing you in he's showing you that he loves you with an everlasting love he is chasing after you God is always chasing after us he wants us not to be lost he wants us not to be lost in the things of this world he wants you not to be swept away by the currents of this world he wants you to come come by him and sit, sit next to him dwell next to him and eat of the goodness of the land he wants you to come and listen to his instructions he wants you to hear his sweet voice telling you I love you. He wants you to know that he called you before you were born. Before you were in your mother's womb, God had you in mind. Before you were conceived, God had a plan for you. He had a good plan for you, Marianne. He knew that one day you would need him. He knew that one day you would be at a point of need where you'd be calling upon Jesus, saying, Jesus, Jesus, have mercy on me. He knew that you would call upon him one day. And so he set you up. But poor Saul was not hearing. He was too busy killing Christians. He didn't even hear from God. He didn't pay attention, so God struck him blind. Knocked him off his big horse and hit his butt on the ground and made him blind. And while he was blind, God said, I chose him. I chose him. He's a chosen one. Listen, verse 15. He says, but the Lord said unto him, go thy way. For he's a you see, see, Ananias was a, was, a, a, a pro, uh, was a disciple of Christ in Damascus. So when the Lord tells him, there's a man called Saul or Tarsus at the street, at the street called Straight, go and heal him of his blindness. Instead of the man of God, Ananias, just going and obeying the Lord, 
Saul was so evil and so nasty and so bad. And Ananias freaked out. He freaked out. He goes, Lord, whoa, 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 whoa. Lord, Lord, Lord. You, don't, you do not know Saul of Tarsus, Lord. You do not know how much he has killed and caused chaos amongst Christians in Jerusalem. You do not know how much trouble he's brought to your people in Jerusalem. Lord, you don't want me messing with that guy. He is bad. And I know he's bad. He is bad than Michael Jackson. He is a bad boy. He's bad from the day he was born. He is bad. And I know he's bad. But the Lord told Ananias, stop and listen to me. You in your little brain, you do not know what I know for I am God. God tells him that same person, that same killer man, that same murderer, Mr. Saul of Tarsus. Listen to me. That man is a chosen vessel unto me. I chose him before he knew him. To bear my name before the Gentiles and the kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him great things that he must do. That he must suffer for my sake. So upon getting instructions, Ananias said, yes, Lord. He obeyed and went looking for Saul of Tarsus to go and lay hands on him and heal him. Ah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, I bless your name. I bless your name. I bless you, Jesus. You're worth your praise, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And verse 16 says, for I will show you. I will show him, Saul, how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. So while Saul was busy killing Christians, God was busy planning his future to be the greatest apostle known to mankind. While Saul was busy killing God's people, God was busy planning his future schedule. He was busy filling up his schedule, knowing with the same strength and power and vigor and, 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 and drive and energy that Saul was busy killing Christians and persecuting them and throwing them in jail. With the same energy, God will take that. God is able to harness your abilities with your availability and then turn those availability, your availability and your ability into his, into his purposes in the kingdom. He's able to take your um, little two cents and turn them around and make you a mighty woman of God and make you a man or woman of impact in your kingdom, in your city. So God looks at Saul and says, with the same strength, with the same power, the same vigor that he has against my church, I will turn that around and use it for my glory. God wants to use your strength for his glory. He wants to use your strength for his kingdom. He wants to use your ability for his kingdom. He wants to grab all that you have worked on so hard. All harness your capabilities and transform them into kingdom changing power. And transform them into the kingdom of God. He wants to use you for a miracle for other people. And Ananias went his way and entered the house. And putting his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, hath appeared unto thee in the way that thou comest, and thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. So he was going to fill him. He was going to pray for him, first of all, for his healing, and then fill him with the Holy Ghost of power of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And immediately there fell from the eyes, from his eyes as it was, been scales. Scales fell out of his eyes after Ananias laid his hands on him. And he received his sight forthwith and rose and he was baptized. So right there instantly, three things happened to Saul. Three things. He got his vision. He got empowered with the Holy Ghost of Christ. The Holy Ghost of God came upon him and he was baptized. Man, talk about a three-prong miracle. Talk about a three-prong anointing miracle. This guy was set the same day. He got healed. He got filled with the Holy Ghost and he got, he got baptized into the ministry. He was ready to serve the Lord. But listen, Saul did not even wait for, he didn't even wait to get back home in Jerusalem. He didn't even wait to get a new set of clothes or get a new tunic, get a new robe. He just began serving God right then and then. He was on power. He was on fire. He was like Muhammad Ali getting in the ring, ready to fight. He was like, bring on, bring on. But now the, 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 the thing is now, he's no longer fighting against the Lord. He was going against the enemy. Against the enemy. And straight away, listen to this. Now verse 19, as we finish. And when he received, after he, after he got healed and got the Holy Ghost and got baptized, he, he had not eaten for three days. He was, he was fasting. He was, he was so upset about losing his vision. He had not even eaten. He was angry. So he was hungry. So verse 19 says, when he received meat, he was strengthened. He ate some food and he got strong. He got some strength. Mm. Ah, that feels good. And he was strengthened. Then Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. He spent some days with the disciples in Damascus. 
And straight away he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the son of God. See, the same man that came persecuting the church, the same man who came against the church of Christ, the same man who was speaking against the church of, of Christ and, and persecuting the Christians, within, within a day he turns around and does a 180. Now he's speaking about Christ. He's speaking about the Christ who's risen, the one who you killed. He says he is the son of God. He is the son of God. Listen, verse 21. But all who, had, who heard him, those who heard him speaking were amazed. And they said, just like you would say, they said, like you would say, Mr. Andrew Kimani, my schoolmate, good to see you, buddy, God bless you. They said unto, just like you and I would say, they said, is not this that destroyed them which called on the name, on his name, oh, come on, let me say that again. Is, is not this he that destroyed them which called on his, on this name in Jerusalem and came hither for that intent that he might bring them bound unto chief Priest, let me translate that in today's language. They were saying, isn't that the same guy who has been killing and persecuting Christians, who has come from Jerusalem to Damascus to grab Christians and take them back to the high priest? How is he preaching about Christ? How is he preaching? Let me tell you, when the Lord touches you, when the Lord changes your life, when the Lord begins to work in your life, them that knew you before, they will, they will have tingling ears. They will wonder what happened to you. They will think something is crazy. Them that knew you, they will be like, oh my goodness, is that the same Andrew that I knew? Is that the same Miriam that I knew? Them that see you, speaking of the goodness of the Lord, after God has touched you and changed your life and filled you with the Holy Ghost and power and the anointing of the Lord, people that knew you, they will be like, this is not the Jesse that I knew. Because when God changes you, he changes you completely. He changes you all the way through. And listen, but Saul increased in the, in the strength. He increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dealt in Damascus, proving that this is very Christ. So as many as doubted him, they didn't believe him. He still, he still stood strong. He got strong. He came to know God even more. He knew the scriptures even more. He read a lot. He studied a lot. He became a Christian. He knew God. So when people came against him and saying, are you not the guy who was killing Christians? He would tell them, I am the servant of Christ, him that you crucified, him that you crucified. I come to you in the name of the Lord, him that you crucified. I come to you in the name of Jesus who was risen, who you crucified. I come to you in the name of Jesus who you slain on the cross of Calvary. He is the king of kings and lord of lords. So listen to me. Saul was not born a Christian. He was not born a man of God. He was born as a heathen. He was born as a sinful man. He was a killer. He was a murderer. He was killing Christians. He was lying against the church of Christ. But God used him to change nations. He has written almost half of the New Testament is through Paul. Because later on, if you read more scriptures, his name became Paul, not Saul. He became, his name became Paul. And God used that man's power. God used that man's anointing. He used his strength, his energy, his vigor, his power, his ability to speak. He would speak to people and many would get saved because God changed him. So God is able to change you. Take your life and turn it around and make you a servant and vessel of God. In summary, listen. In order for God to use you, he needs the first thing is availability. For God to use you as a Christian, he needs your availability. That's number one, verse one to verse three. He was available. He was going to Damascus. He didn't even know why he was going there. He thought he was going to kill more Christians, but he was going towards his calling. He was walking towards his destiny. He was walking towards his God to, to meet, meet God, get changed by God, meet God for transformation. God needs you to be available. You're available. You're ready for God. Secondly, obedience. When the Lord struck him down, he asks, is that you? Is that you, Lord? Is that you, Lord? And the Lord says, yes, I am Jesus whom we persecute. As soon as the voice said, I am Jesus, Saul obeyed. He did not argue anymore. So the second thing you got to do is obey the voice of God. Obedience. Number three, transformation. Transformation. When Ananias got to Saul's home, where Saul was staying, he prayed for his vision for him to see. After he prayed for his vision, he filled him, prayed for him to be filled with the Holy Ghost. After the Holy Ghost, he baptized him. That's all in the Bible right there in verse 15. He got transformed by the Lord because God cannot use you in your old ways. He cannot use you with your old wine. He got to put new wine in new wineskins. He got to transform you before he can use you. He has to load you up with, his, with a new... He has to recalibrate your, your, your brain, your mind, your system, and take out all the junk from the enemy and put you into the, put God's presence in you. Fill you up with new data, new information. Mr. Kimani, help me, you scientist. He puts you more information in you. He gives you more data, more memory, more RAM. I mean, whatever it is, he got programmed for ministry. He got programmed to serve the Lord. He got changed by God. He got transformed to go and serve God. So that them that saw him, 
even though physically he looked the same, he was still the same mean looking tall guy. Physically he was still the same Saul who was killing and arresting Christians. But on the inside he had been transformed by the renewing of his mind. He had come face to face with, even though he didn't see him, but he came face to face with Jesus. His, face, his, his soul came to the presence of God. When that light struck him from heaven, God came into his presence. He got changed and transformed. He became renewed. Now he was ready for the ministry. God has to change you before he can use you. Because you cannot go out there unless you're armed with the, with the, with the, with the, with the tools of the ministry. You got to know the gospel. You got to know the word of God. You got to know the scriptures. So when you stand to speak of the goodness of God, you know what you're talking about. When you say the Lord says he loves you, you know what you're saying. When you say that says the Lord in the name of Jesus rise up and walk, you have the anointing of God. You got the power of God because you have been with God. You have seen God heal you fast. He healed you. Saul was healed by God. If you study the Bible, you find that Saul was used of God to perform many, many, many miracles because he had been with God. He had seen God. He had felt God and been changed by God. So he took the same anointing and changed his nation, changed his people, changed every country that God sent him to. The next thing, you got to be anointed with the Holy Ghost, which you read that. you got to be anointed with the Holy Spirit. you got to be baptized to go and serve God with the Holy Spirit. Then number five, you got to hear from God. you got to hear God's instructions. You have to be led with instructions. You cannot go on your own. Miss Maureen Asani, good to see you. You have to hear from God and know what God is saying. you got to know what God is saying for your city. I am in Texas. God will not give me instructions for India for Texas. If he wants to send me to Texas, he'll give me Texas in Texas built information that will go and work for Texas, not Indian info for Kenya. He just, God is a God of order, not chaos. He has to give you proper instructions. You're going to hear from God and know exactly what says the Lord. Number six, you got to go. Listen, verse 20 says, verse 20 says, and straight away, as soon as he got the healing and the conversation and the conversion, he says straight away he preached Christ in the synagogue. The same synagogue that Saul came to arrest Christians in Damascus. The same synagogue where he came to grab, arrest and drag the Christians by the jaw. The same Christians he, place he came to arrest and kill and persecute Christians. He turns around and get at 180, become born again and converted. And he goes into the same temple. He walks in and preaches Jesus Christ crucified. Preaches the gospel of Christ. He went in and told them, that says the Lord. Jesus Christ loves you with a passion. He has a love and passion for you. He went and preached the gospel. You have to go and preach the gospel. Finally, you got to be strong in the Lord. You got to be strong in the Lord. If I wasn't a strong Christian, I would have been defeated a long time. I would have given up a long time ago. When you choose to serve God, you will face a lot of obstacles. You'll face a lot of opposition. You will always be up against opposition. So you have to be strong in the Lord. You have to be strong because you will be faced the same stuff that Paul or Saul was going against. The same, the same hate and the same vigor, the same attacks, the same chaos he brought into the killing of Christians. When he became a Christian, all that stuff came up against him. He had a lot of attacks. Many were trying to kill him. People came against him because that stuff was turned around against him. It was flipped backwards against him. So you, when you serve God, you got to know that your enemy is not dead. The devil doesn't die. He still he sees you. He, he knows now he has lost you. You're no longer serving him. So he will, he, will, he will crank it up seven times and throw everything at you. Throw even the kitchen stove at you. The kitchen sink. He will throw everything at you to stop you. Because the devil knew if he stopped Saul from pursuing what he was pursuing, he will stop the ministry that God was planning on doing across the nations. He knew that Saul has a special calling. See, the devil knows too. He sees, he hears. And so you got to be strong in the Lord. That way you can overcome the enemy. That you can serve God and be strong in the Lord. So remember as I close, you don't have to be born in a special home with a special silver spoon. You don't have to be born in a priest's home or an apostle's house or a bishop's house to serve God. You don't have to be born knowing the Bible, knowing the Bible, holding the Bible. You don't have to be born wealthy or rich. I was born by a very simple, simple couple. My mom and dad were just regular people. My mom was a farmer. My dad was an engineer, just a little mechanic, um, engineer from a college. Just made a little money to take her through school. He didn't even know the Lord. My mom knew the Lord. My dad did not. But I lived with my dad in the city of Nairobi. But my dad was against God. He didn't care about God. He didn't want to hear about God. He would, he would whoop me if I went to, to a, a Christian event. When I come home, I'll be whooped. But I rose up against every opposition and I said, I have seen and tasted of the Lord. I got born again in college, in high school. And I said, I have seen and tasted of this Jesus. 
He is so real, so good. It don't matter what my daddy, my mommy says, I will serve God. I don't care what my friends say. If my friends think I've gone crazy, I don't want to go dancing with them, I will serve the Lord. If the whole world turns against me, I will still serve God. If the whole world goes crazy and goes into, into evil lifestyles and chasing after whatever, I will chase after God. And I've been chasing after Christ for so long, I know he's real. After doing the same thing for 30 years, you know it has to be real. I have to be, it has to be real. Unless I'm a crazy lunatic. So Saul tested Jesus. He felt Jesus. He had, when Jesus, he was struck down blind. He knew that Jesus is real. He knew that Je Jehovah God existed. So when people tell him about, oh, there is no God, he was like, yes, I know there is God because he touched me. He struck me. He struck me blind. And the same Jesus, when I, when, when, when I cried unto him, he healed me. The scales of my eyes fell. And now I can see you. I can see men now. So Saul could see. And he said, if the same Lord, Jesus, who spoke to me in the wilderness while he struck me off the horse, has healed me and has filled me with the Holy Ghost and has baptized me, I will now serve him the rest of my life. That's my testimony. When God changed me, when God, as a little boy, I had a, a rheumatic fever that almost made me crippled when I was 11. I almost got crippled. My leg was failing. I, I was losing muscular power in one of my legs. I went through multiple surgeries when I was 10, 11. Oh my goodness. I remember many nights at the MP Shine in Nairobi Hospital. When God healed me, the doctor said, how did this boy recover? You know, so severe, they thought I would be lame. They, would be, they thought I would be lame for the rest of my life. They thought I'd never be able to walk for the rest of my life. So when the Lord healed me, many years later on, I came to know him. And I fell in love with him and I said, I will serve you all the days of my life. And I said, I don't care who goes with me. I will pursue after Jesus. And I said, rather than have the Lord chase after me and maybe catch up with me when I'm old, I will chase after the Lord. I will follow after God. I will go after God. So I pray that you all may continue going after God. You Christians may continue serving God. Continue chasing after Jesus. Continue living for the Lord. Continue praising the Lord. Keep on praising him and lifting him up. Maybe Miss Wanaina, keep serving the Lord. It may not look like it makes sense right now because you may not be getting through in your breakthroughs of some things you're praying for. But in his time, Jesus makes all things beautiful. In his time, he makes all things beautiful. He makes all things beautiful. So may the Lord make all things beautiful for you. May the Lord remember you. May he touch you. May you know that even though you are just a simple human being, in your little town or village or city, he has a good plan for you. Because the Bible says, for I know the plans I have for you. Plans for good, not for evil. Plans to do you good and not evil. May the Lord do you good, my, my friends. May the Lord touch you. May he do you good. May he remember you and answer your prayers. May he hearken unto your cry. When you call upon the Lord, may he answer your prayers. And may you be available for the Lord. Just like Saul was available, though he didn't even know he was available. May the Lord find you ready and waiting. May you be able to hear God before he strikes you. I pray you won't be hard-headed and not hear God until it's too late. I pray you hear God now while you can. Now while you're strong. While you're young and in your 20s and 30s, you can serve God. May God change your destiny by you yielding yourself unto him. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you. I thank you for this powerful message tonight. From a persecutor to an apostle, the life of Saul of Tarsus. I pray that, Lord, may you change your people, Lord, by renewing our mind. Let us hear your voice. Let us know the value of living a life after God. Let us know the value of chasing after God. Let us know the value of living for Jesus. Let us know the benefits of living for God. That we become revolutionists. We become changers of our countries. We become changers of our cities. We become changers of our municipalities. We become a, a, a hand of God extended. We become the arm of God unto the nations. We become God's physical hand to the, those around us. We become the healing hands of Jesus. Jesus. May we find us faithful, Jehovah God. May you find us waiting and faithful to use us for your glory. May we be worthy of your calling, Jesus. 
May we not be struck off the horse, Lord. Find us walking and chasing after you. Find us chasing after you. Find us going after the ministry. Find us doing good to our neighbors. Find us loving our families. Find us serving people that we not be struck blind like Saul, but we be found worthy of your grace. Hallelujah, Jesus. May you be found worthy of the grace of God. My wonderful friends, tonight as we close, may you be found worthy of the calling of Jesus. May you be found ready when the Lord calls. May you hear the Lord and obey him when he calls. May you be waiting for the Lord for the next instructions. May your heart be willing and humble enough to receive God's instructions. When the Lord speaks, may you say, Here am I, Lord. Send me. Lord, speak your servant heareth. When I was in college, we wrote a little, a little song my friend wrote that we never published. It says like this, Lord, speak your servant heareth, and make thy will known to me. Lord, speak thy servant heareth, here am I, send me, send me. Lord, speak your servant heareth, and let your will known to me. Lord, speak thy servant heareth. Hear my, send me, send me. May the Lord find you ready and willing to be used of his glory. May you be found worthy of the blessings and the grace of God. May you be found ready with your lamps full of oil. Saying, Lord, where would you have me go? Lord, I'm listening. Speak, I listen, O oh Lord. Hear my Lord. Send me, send me. May your heart be soft enough to hear God and be able to know the difference between the voice of God and the voice of the Antichrist. May you know the voice of God, not the Antichrist, because he's looming around. He's probably around, looming around. Who knows? But when you hear his voice, when you hear his voice, say like Saul did, when Saul was struck, struck by the Lord, when he was struck by the Lord, and he had the voice of God, he knew that was different from the voices he had before. The Bible says in verse 4 of Acts chapter 9 verse 4, And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus. I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against pricks. It says in NIV, it is hard to kick against thorns. When you kick against thorns, you get, you get hard. You cannot keep fighting against Jesus. You cannot win. You cannot keep fighting Jesus. You cannot win. You cannot keep killing my people. You cannot win. You cannot keep persecuting my people. You cannot win. You will not win this fight, Paul. Saul, Saul I keep saying, Papa, he was Saul. As soon as Saul knew that was Jesus, he obeyed the rest of the way. His life was changed. And because of him, we are here today. He preached the gospel from city, from Judea to Jerusalem. He went from city, from Galilee. He went all over the place. Mesopotamia, he was all over the place walking and taking journeys and expeditions and trips. And he preached the gospel of Jesus until his breath was taken away from him. May the Lord find us ready to do the same. In your own little way, may you be found worthy of the calling. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I am a very, very, very emotional speaker. Because when I speak, I hear God. And when I hear the power of God come on me, I cannot contain it. And all I know how to do is just open my mouth and let him speak through me. 
Let him speak through me. Let him say what he wish to sh- wishes to say. Sometimes I plan on saying it for 10 minutes, but I end up doing it for 30 minutes. I speak as he says speak. Sometimes I plan on doing 30 minutes. He only gives me 5 minutes to speak as he says speak. So may the Lord bless you as you've been watching and those are going to watch tomorrow and the days to come. May you be found ready to serve the Lord. May you be found ready to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you. I love you all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you, my people. God to see you. Good to see you, Auntie Jane in Houston. God bless you. Good to see you, Doris Karaoke. God bless you, my niece, my cousin. <laughs> yeah. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless God for you. May you have a great day as we close. I pray you may have a beautiful day. Okay, I love you all. I have to close, but I have had a good time. I hope you are blessed. Continue serving the Lord. Remember, Saul went from a prosecutor to an apostle. If God can use anything, he can use you. If God could change Saul from a killer into a preacher of the gospel, he can definitely use you. If God can use Paul and Saul there of, of Tarsus to change very, very many cities and kingdoms, he can surely use you. Just be available and ready. And when you hear his voice, do not hack in your heart. Follow God and serve God. And God will bless you as you serve him. Good to see you, Doris. God bless you. Hope to come home soon and have some chapati with you guys. God is so good. Come on, let's finish with the dance. Come on, praise Jesus. I love you all. We'll see you again next week, Sunday, same time. We do this 9.30 p.m. in Central Time, U.S., 5.30 a.m. in Kenya, in East Africa, in, in England, Europe, most of Europe. It's about 5.30 a.m. in the morning. Sorry, it's a little bit early, but it's good to start with the Lord. So may you be blessed tonight as I close out this, and see you next week, same time. And uh, enjoy your presence with the Lord as you continue to live for the Lord, and uh, do the best you can to be 
a person who hears the Lord and obeys and follows after the Lord. God bless you. I love you all. Good night. Good morning. Mwah. Bye. <laughs>